Uh, hi, dear participants. Thank you all for joining us today. And I'm Rashad Ahmadov from SPB OCHS team. And I'd like to thank Leila Hanum for joining us today to accept, for accepting our invitation uh, to share her valuable experience and knowledge with us on an important topic, virtual HSC today. And I would like to thank each of you for registering and joining us here. And tremendous thanks to our dear team members, uh, Junel Hussainli and Julie Hussainli, for organizing such an event. And please, dear participants, during the event, mute your microphones uh, to avoid any interruptions. And if you have any question during the uh, presentation, please <coughs> put your question in the uh, chat section. And at the end of the presentation, our speaker will answer them. Thank you all for your attention. And now I am leaving the stage for Leila Khan. Leila Khan, please. Uh, dear Rules, thank you very much for this opportunity. Nice to meet you today. Um, uh, I will start my presentation in a few minutes, but before I would like to introduce myself for those who are not familiar with me. So my name is Leila Hantishiva. Uh, I am working uh, as HEC specialist in uh, Schlumberger and assigned for Azerbaijan and Georgia locations. I started my career in Schlumberger as environmental specialist in 2014. And during these years, I increased uh, the area of my responsibility. And today, I am not uh, responsible only for environmental safety, which uh, covers the chemical management and waste management, but also uh, I'm responsible for drops and mechanical lifting compliance on the country level. So at the same time, I'm working in Baku Higher Oil School, uh, working from 2019, and I'm lecturer in uh, Foundation Engineering B. I love my job in Baku Higher Oil School, and I believe that this is the most amazing part of my career because you students are always, for me, uh, the source of energy, the source of knowledge, a source of information. And I love you very much. Thank you very much for organizers of uh, this event, for inviting me for this opportunity to join to you one more time. And uh, I believe that we will enjoy this event today. So uh, now uh, uh, I will pass to the topic. So today's subject is virtual HEC. And as Rashad said, yes, really, HEC is a very important topic and we should care about it because HEC saves lives. It saves lives not only for the organization, not only for the organization and company you're working for, not for the statistics, but it saves it for you and your uh, loved family members and etc. That's why we need to understand from this point of uh, your edu education, because you're gonna work in a global, I believe that all of you will uh, choose and work in a global oil and gas companies or um, even another global company, which will care about your safety and about your life. That's why on this point of your education, please focus as well as on other subjects, focus on the HEC, because this is a really big deal. This is a really big matter you need to, sh uh, to um, uh, hear about. Uh, so now coming to our subject, again, we will focus on virtual HEC because in current conditions we need to understand that if uh, before we can physically uh, be at the workplace and uh, can, uh, can interact with the employees and with, with each other, today it is complicated, today it's more difficult because uh, we, are, we, we have to work in a remote mode. That's why we need to understand what is the scope of the HEC, what is the objectives of the HEC function in the organization, and what is the role of the safety at the workplace, and how to adopt all this scope to the virtual mode, and uh, because we need to do this uh, in kind conditions. So uh, coming to, to, to the next slides. Shot. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, coming to the, uh, to the scope of HEC, I will ask the first question to you. I will ask to write in the chat or uh, just unmute your microphones and ask, answer because uh, the best way of the communication is the just interaction. Please, could you please just uh, remind uh, what can be considered as HEC tools? We are not talking exactly about the virtual HEC now on this slide. We are focusing on the HEC tools we know. Which HC tools do you know? Or you can use the tool in Zoom and write it right here on the on the screen.
Any ideas? Okay, I will give you some hint. Uh, just uh, just imagine that HC tools, this is not just, uh, even if on the picture I have given you uh, physical tools, which are not exactly the HC tools, uh, think not only about the physical tools we have, think about the tools which may affect on the mind of the person, because this is the most beneficial tool we may have in the HEC. So which tools may be used uh, uh, in order to affect the, and influence the mind and uh, behavior of the employee or the person? We are not talking about uh, any organization. We are talking about the behavior of people and uh, of the behavior of people and yes, safety trainings, exactly. Thank you, Jalia. Then. PP, okay, thank you very much. Also correct. Other ideas? Okay. Uh, yeah, thank participants, you. please feel free to engage. Yes. Safety policy, safety signs in dangerous areas. Yes, exactly. Glasses, hat, boots, gloves, jacket. Yes, this is types of the PPE. Exactly. Other opinions? Place positioning and restriction equipment for workers who work six feet above. Exactly. Thank you. A fact meeting points at dangerous situations. Risk assessment report. Mm -hmm. Positioning. Mm -hmm. Well done. What else? Think about the HEC tools which may influence the mind of the person. Just imagine that you are even uh, the engineer in big oil and gas company or in other global company. Think which, what may uh, affect or influence to your mind, to your behavior at the workplace, rather than physical tools. What else? Safety culture, very well done. I think the main thing is uh, awareness about hazards in the plant. Exactly, exactly. So all your answers are correct. Some of them are at the top and some of them are uh, also related to the topic and also related to the HEC tools, but less related, let me say. But all the answers are correct. We are talking about the HEC tools which can, uh, which can uh, change the behavior of the employee at the workplace. And here I will just show you the answers which are also correct uh, uh, as well as, your, uh, the, the, as the answers you have given just a few minutes ago. This is about, um, this is about the communication, training, instruction, audit and inspections, supervision, investigation. Exa uh, of course, these tools are not the only tools we have in HEC. We have a wide range of the tools. But we today we will focus on these tools because these are the main branches of the HEC tools we are us usually using on the daily basis. So the tools you have just mentioned in, uh, in the chat are related to some, uh, let me say, the, this is a, a type of subgroup of, uh, this, of uh, this HEC tools. For example, awareness uh, is, type of the, uh, is part of the training or communication. Risk assessment is uh, part of, uh, let me say, supervision or maybe uh, adopted also under instruction and also communication as well, uh, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, keep in mind this HC tools, and now I will ask you the main question of this course and the reason why we have gathered today. So what means to turn them all to virtual mode? How do you understand if you will have this HC tools uh, in remote mode? And how, which, think about the challenges and uh, which advantages will you have if uh, we will convert all of this to virtual type? 
So keep in mind all these HD tools and we will come to this at the end of our training. But now we will go through each of these points and try to discuss and understand, give your opinion, give, give your uh, ideas about the uh, low lights and highlights of, the, of each of uh, these tools uh, implemented in a virtual mode. Let's start with the communication. How do you understand the communication? Could you please unmute the microphone if someone would like to share the opinion because maybe the definition of this work will take some time if you will type it in the chat. If someone have an idea, could you please communicate? Could you please share? What is the communication at the workplace? Hello, Nela Hanum. Hello. Uh, teacher, I think uh, virtual communication means that people try to communicate among each other in workplace, mm -hmm. which helps uh, safety uh, too, because they can share ideas and uh, their experience. Yes. I understand it's like that. Okay. Fidan, do you think that the communication is done, the communication we're talking about is done between the employees? This is type of interaction or something else? I think, uh, actually, I didn't understand what do you mean by interaction? Interaction means that you are communicating, you are interacting, you are discussing. Ah, yes, interacting, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think that in this way. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I will agree with you that communication, some part of communication is a discussion uh, done between employees. But what is the another part of the communication? Hello. Um, I wanted to note uh, some point about that. Mainly communication is about uh, seeing some risky or dangerous points and noting them to supervisors or senior engineers in your area or making other engineers aware of the dangers that they haven't seen in the area. Thank you very much, Jala. Jala is also correct. Yes, I will agree with you and with Fedan that communication is something which is done by, let me say, employer who, is, who cares about the safety of the employees at the workplace. And he communicates this usually with the supervisor or the manager, etc., who has the employees under it. And then, uh, as Fidan said, this communication happens and between employees and between the manage, between employees and the management. So the communication in overall, if we'll summarize these two great opinions, we will summarize that communication in so is something which is done by the employer in order to communicate between its employees that uh, there are some updates, there are some new workflows and etc. at the workplace in order to uh, to make make sure that employees uh, are aware and increase awareness as Rashad uh, mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. So the communication is usually done in order to inform its in the workplace employees about new updates or about the procedures working at the workplace and also about uh, to uh, increase awareness about, for example, some accidents. Just imagine that on another location happened some accident and you would like to aware your employees about the uh, root causes and the causes of this accident. So in this case, what are you doing? You are communicating this information in written or in verbal form. But we are talking today about the virtual, uh, virtual form of HEC. And here I, 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 I have to mention that we have lost some type of communication we had usually. This is about interaction again. So usually we had the normal uh, workflow when we go to the work every day. But today when, the, uh, when we are restricted to go to the workplace, we have no chance to interact with people, to talk with people and to ensure that, uh, that, that people understood and people get this information. So we need to do this in written way usually, which means that just one second, which means that we are doing the communication only by email, only by meetings or webcasts, by booklets or by trainings. Training is a particular type of communication, which is not exactly the communication, but this is type of communication when we are communicating the risk assessment, the new knowledge and et cetera, et cetera. But what is the, when you see the list uh, given on the slide about the emails, meetings, webcasts, booklets, and et cetera, what do you think challenges this uh, type of communication uh, in terms of sufficiency? 
why this type of communication may not be sufficient? What, what let me say, uh, what is the low light of virtual type of communication in this case? Your ideas. Just brainstorm and you will uh, come to the proper answer. Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, the problem is emotions disappear in cyberspace and via email or the or um, tr online trainings we the trainers may not express uh, their ideas uh, more clearly yes exactly uh, even uh, we are restricted to ask the question because here you just uh, you, you have just suggested to, uh, to in, in order to have the structure of the of our meeting uh, proper you have just suggested to write the uh, questions in the chat but when we are communicating face to face you have a chance to express your emotions to show that you are not understanding etc etc but in yep, this case, exactly I'm a little bit restricted to understand if my student, if uh, people in front of me uh, um, understand me fully or not. Thank you very much, Rashad. Other ideas? What else? In my opinion, uh, in this way, uh, all uh, safety rules depending on the internet connection. So maybe someone is a place uh, where is no internet connection, so they exactly. cannot get email. So it means they will not be aware about uh, some um, problems in workplace. So I yes, think it's exactly. very dangerous. This if you don't, this is actually the main problem uh, when we have the communication in virtual mode because uh, we cannot ensure if people uh, if the employee received the email or not or even just a simple problem uh, not a problem just a simple issue when the employees are negligent to the thing they are receiving they may skip only uh, or they just intentionally or not intentionally intentionally skip the message uh, received by uh, from management or from HEC function etc that's why we have these difficulties when we cannot ensure if people understand or if they received or got the message or not. We are writing usually these messages in a common language. For example, this may be the English because uh, some of population is uh, English speaking, some of them are uh, Azerbaijan, uh, uh, Azeri speakers and another us, uh, are, the, are speaking only in Russian. In this case, we have a problem that we are communicating the information uh, in one common language, but there are some difficulties if some of the, this population uh, are not the uh, native speakers of the language, and they may get the message incorrect in uh, best, best shape, so, or even not understand what's the uh, message about. So we have these challenges in the communication uh, even today in different companies because uh, we uh, are restricted to communicate it in a normal way, in normal path as we usually um, have. So one, types of the one, one of the types is Jala, is, if I'm not mistaken, Jala mentioned in the, in the chat about the trainings. Training is, yes, this is a particular type, type of the communication and this is at the same time separate tool which we are using at the workplace. This is type of the uh, HEC tool. And uh, here you can see that we have two types of trainings. So web-based trainings and class-based trainings, which means that web-based trainings are uh, done usually online and class-based trainings are done in the class when we have, again, people interaction, as Rashad said, emotions, etc., discussions, people understanding, not understanding, clarifying questions, etc. Again, one more time, uh, question to those, uh, to, to, to all of you, but especially to those who did not speak. Uh, so what is the disadvantage of having the uh, web-based trainings only? And what is the advantages in your opinion? Hello, can I say? Yes, sure. Uh, for example, it, environment can differ. Uh, uh -huh. Yes, uh, for example, if we are home, we have no colleagues or the uh, the teammates around us. We just watch, and uh, it can um, lower our motivation. But in in a workplace, in an exact environment, we can have uh, higher uh, emotions, higher motivation. We can ask a lot of questions because it is the exact environment. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I will agree with your opinion because when we have no these emotions and we, when we have no opportunity for interaction, discussion, etc., we may be demotivated uh, by the environment. Uh, thank you very much, Afak. Who else? Other opinions? 
So let's say in this way. So we have a disadvantage, which, which Afak mentioned. Let's have one advantage of having the virtual training, even one advantage. Actually, at the start, I have said, but I, uh -huh. I'm expecting yes. more engagement from our participants. Yes, Rashad. Can I say it too? Uh, try to. Uh, for example, more some of the people, uh, at least I know, uh, they are more con uh, confident or convenient at home. Uh, mm -hmm. And when they watch, they can... Um, take a coffee for example they can feel comfortable uh, watching the lectures and they can maybe understand better at home uh, in a convenient way but i will challenge this point because when we have coffee and other uh, comfort at the uh, at the place uh, during the training we may be distracted by this comfort and uh, we may just uh, lose part of the training i think mm, yes True. May I add? Yes, sure. Uh, I think uh, in this way we don't need yeah. special place uh, for training. For example, we can yes. do anywhere we are. So, uh, for example, if we have a trainer and we don't, he or she has a plan for this day, but uh, in online meeting they can do it even at car, uh, anywhere they are. So. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Mm, it can engage more people, I think. Yes, uh, I will agree with this point as well. Thank you very much, Fidan, because yes, this is something about time saving. This is something about the resource saving, uh, money saving, and because we are not uh, just appointing some venue, yes? Uh, we are doing this online by internet, and uh, there is no, uh, let me say, the um, uh, money charge for this. And uh, that's why, uh, yes, uh, uh, this is one of advantages. We may uh, we may just um, uh, point in in the, the virtual trainings. So, uh, the, the, another one, yes, this is about the time saving. Time saving means that we are not using the time for commuting and uh, for commuting to the workplace, let me say. And at the same time, we are saving time even if we are in a car. But again, this I may challenge. Uh, I, I would like to challenge this a little bit because when we are even in a car or in another place, we may be distracted and this will uh, just... Uh, the, take off the, all the safety matters so we are preparing and you know, we are trying to implement uh, during, the, during our jobs. So if we are just in a car and uh, we are commuting, we cannot, we, we, we shouldn't, let me say, uh, in, join the meeting because we may be distracted by meeting and um, lost our um, uh, just uh, attention from the traffic. So uh, this is a little bit challenging. Uh, that's why uh, I will suggest not to uh, give the point to, ad as, uh, to advantage of the virtual trainings uh, to this idea. But again, uh, if we are at home, if we are uh, resting somewhere, we may uh, just uh, turn. Uh, we, we may um, participate on virtual trainings rather than if we'll be at the workplace and uh, we had no chance to. Uh, to to uh, participate on training if we have another job, even at the workplace. If we have, if for example, we are assigned on some uh, project, we may not uh, have a chance to uh, to to take part on the training. What is the another challenging uh, point for the virtual trainings? What else? Uh, may I answer? Yes, sure. Uh, in the class-based trainings, we can see some tools touch or uh, actually in real life see how they work. Exactly. Uh, that's why, but we don't have uh, this chance in the web-based trainings, which is the main disadvantage, I think. This is one of the main disadvantages, Jala, exactly. Because uh, on the different trainings, toolbox talk meetings and etc. before the job uh, and uh, during the job, we are usually saying to people that uh, you should do your uh, trainings and your exercises and uh, exercises related to the job, I mean. You may, may do the instructions and etc immediately at the workplace because people should understand what are they talking about they should understand and see physically what is the tool what is the tool what is the purpose of this tool how to use it etc etc 
So it is not so efficient to do this remotely and show to people the things on the on screen rather than to do this on the workplace. Uh, just imagine that we would have this training in a class and then I, will, uh, I would suggest you to go to the workshop and see all these things by your eyes. This will be more sufficient, yes, and more interesting because you are interested to see the things you have just heard uh, heard uh, on the uh, and seen on the slides, but uh, another way is that uh, I'm showing you this on the presentation, and that's all. Uh, this less this is less motivating way I think in the trainings. Shalia, I will agree with you in this point as well. So uh, uh, now we are going to the next point. We are going to the audits. Audits are the, again the next HEC tool we are using on a daily basis. Here on the slide, we can see the types of the audits. Again, these are not all the types, but these are the main branches of the audits we have. So here you can see the government audit, international audit, workplace inspection, and hazard hunt. So government audit is usually performed by the legal authorities. This is done by against the legal, against, against compliance to the uh, local legislation. Then we have the international audits. International audits are usually done uh, against standards which are applicable on international level. What does it mean? For example, uh, we have some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, services which are not uh, services, I mean the uh, insurance services, which are not applicable in our country. Not applicable means that they are not developed yet. For example, we have some companies uh, in the country I mean global companies, uh, which would like uh, to ensure uh, the, the, uh, the ensure their uh, work sites again against uh, fire safety. So it, fire safety standards. Let me say we have no this uh, we have no this uh, service uh, applicable not applicable developed in Azerbaijan. That's why we need to approach to international organizations which are not even uh, working in Azerbaijan, but they have the international contract with the inter on the international level. That's why we are approaching to the international companies which may uh, ensure us against the uh, fire safety because we would like to have this uh, on our workplace to, uh, to, to have the safety on, on a high level. That's why this is just a short example from the company I am working for, but uh, the, in other companies has also the same practice. So uh, this is one of the example of international audits when the company which is insuring your company should make the audit to ensure what is the, uh, what is the level of precaution measures uh, at your work site. For example, if you have sufficient number of fire extinguishers and fire, uh, fire, fire safety equipment and etc. That's why international company should make the audit. Now, in these conditions, when the all things are uh, collapsed and uh, everything is working, ev every companies are working in a remote mode, we need to adopt this HEC tool uh, to virtual as well. That's why international audits are uh, conducted also in a virtual mode. They are asking somebody who is representative from your site. Uh, they are asking this representative to uh, conduct a virtual call uh, with the camera on and they are checking uh, all the points they are interested in. The same is done when we are talking about the workplace inspections. Workplace inspections are done uh, against internal standards. Every uh, organization should have their own internal uh, standards and policies. And internal workplace in investigation is done to ensure that the compliance is uh, on appropriate level. The hazard hunt is another type of the inspections which is done on a daily basis on a uh, routine work uh, on a routine workplace um, uh, operations. Let me say, what does it mean? So your middle supervisor or your manager is asking you to turn on the camera and go through the workplace, and he is looking or she is looking for the hazards small uh, risks and hazards at the workplace because even each small and insignificant risk and hazard may bring to the big uh, problem uh, after a while. That's why we need to care about each insignificant uh, hazard uh, from, from our point of view. 
uh, for example, we may look at some hazard or risk and see it insignificant, but maybe it's a real big problem. That's why we need to pay attention to each of these uh, hazards. Why I did not describe the government audit as I did it uh, for each international workplace and hazard hunts, because our country unfortunately did not adopt it yet uh, the government audits uh, to make them uh, virtual. That's why uh, these government audits are postponed for now. Uh, and uh, for now we have only the emails, the letters and etc when they are asking us to confirm if some conditions or some standards or some uh, local requirements are in place or not and uh, this uh, this approach has also its own uh, limitations uh, because uh, it, the company may just uh, write that it's okay or and just uh, skip the problems it has inside so that's why this is uh, this approach has some limitations and unfortunately we haven't got uh, adopted not we are talking not about the company we're talking about the in overall government yes government has not adopted uh, this uh, practice um, to can conditions that's why uh, we have postponed uh, not we the government have postponed uh, this audits for a while let me say uh, this is about the audits and the, uh, we have just uh, mentioned the advantages and disadvantages of the audits. We have the next uh, tool is the investigation. As I have mentioned a few minutes ago, even if we are auditing the workplace, we are uh, uh, trying to focus on them even little thing uh, or little problem we have at the workplace. Uh, unfortunately, some accidents still happen. So in this case, we need to do the investigation, investigation for each single case we have at the workplace in order to show the leadership and commitment, in order to show uh, leadership and commitment of the organization, of the employer to its employees and its work site. Uh, to understand what is the accident root cause, because in every e single accident we have an uh, immediate cause which uh, directly brings to the accident, and we have a root cause which is indirect but still the cause uh, caused this uh, situation, this incident, let me say. And to ensure that continuous improvement program is on. What does it mean? It means that if we will continuously report and find the hazards at the workplace and will eliminate these hazards uh, uh, from the workplace then we will continuously improve and safety culture as somebody mentioned in the chat from the beginning safety culture and um, uh, in overall uh, conditions of the uh, conditions at the workplace uh, safety environment let me say will improve every time Otherwise, there is no way to continuously improve the safety at the workplace. That's why even each single accident should be investigated and brought till the end. Till the end means that we need to brought it till the root cause. What is the root cause of, uh, of particular accident? So uh, the last one, this is just for fun, the picture uh, which, uh, which shows the reality. We usually uh, say this, uh, even we say this joke, we use this uh, joke even if we are at the workplace, because supervisors uh, or managers, uh, they, they, there, is some, uh, there is some idea of, 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 from employee's side that managers are usually resting in the room or HEC function are resting in the room and they are not the persons who are working uh, under sunlight. So this is just for joke and uh, here we have a real another problem about the supervision. Supervision is usually done in order to uh, in order to uh, support employees to uh, show the way and to supervise, to instruct the employees how to work even if the employee is working for a long time because operations change and requests from the clients usually change. That's why we need to understand what is the uh, we need some instruction from the supervisor to show us the right way in order to, to know what's the expectation from us like a team, like a person, like a company. Uh, that's why we need a supervision. So supervision is usually done. Uh, I will just uh, just um, list 
some types of the uh, some uh, let me say uh, tools to support the supervision and then we'll ask you to think and say what are the advantages or disadvantages of such approach so usually we have a supervision in the workplace when the supervisor is presenting uh, at the same place where employees are operating and uh, so he is supervising, he's showing the way, instructing, et cetera, its employees. But uh, in this case, when, the, when we are on remote, uh, when we are in remote conditions, we need to use the virtual inspections, which are the types uh, or parts of the uh, virtual audits, pre-job meetings, which is a part of the um, communication, toolbox talk, which are the types of the meetings, uh, which are short meetings, which are done uh, among the steps of uh, some uh, operation, some job during the day, and back to back. Each supervisor should have someone who will uh, who will uh, who will present at the workplace, and this uh, supervisor who is working remotely will just uh, rely on this back-to-back uh, -back supervisor who will uh, just uh, make the who will be just a um, uh, communicator between the uh, people at the work site and the supervisor. Now, before I will ask you about the advantages and disadvantages of the super virtual supervision, my question is to you. Why do you think uh, it is important to do the supervision in overall? Uh, what is the role of supervisor? Yes? Can I? Yes, sure. Uh, some people uh, can be unexperienced and supervi mm -hmm. supervisor can uh, lead them uh, in the right way. Uh, and they can show uh, what to do, what not to do. For um, for even um, some experienced people, they also need some supervisors who can help them uh, in a specific problem uh, and lead them in the right way. Very well, uh, Afak. I will agree with you. But uh, if I will ask my question from the another side, uh, so they, they are the people. Supervisors are the people who are leading the uh, the, the group of employees. Yes. 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 But uh, another another question is that if uh, this uh, the, if the employees at the workplace are still uh, working. Why should the supervisor work in a remote mode if the other employees, his or she's employees, are working at the site? Uh, may I? Yes, sure. Uh, I think there is always a need for a single person over a, a total group or team in order to analyze all of the works and not that uh, which work have uh, which work has been done by people and. Uh, combine all of them in order to see total project. I think supervisors are uh, separating uh, the whole work into different parts and assigning them to different workers in order to do them, but uh, the whole job is done by supervisor. Yes, Jale, exactly. The supervisor is the person who sees the whole picture, yes? And if we will, uh, let me say, just uh, lost the supervisor from the team, then the whole uh, process will be lost, let me say. Uh, so not be lost, just it will, uh, it will be damaged or it will be delayed and etc. the whole project, I mean. It will be chaos. Sorry? It will be like chaos, mess. Yes, yes, this will be some, like, yes, type of mess, exactly. That's why we need the supervisor, and uh, we need the supervisor uh, to, we, we should just uh, restrict the supervisor from the workplace in current conditions, and to make it, just keep it like a brain, and he will lead the process uh, from above, and uh, he will just address the, uh, the message to the middle supervisor, uh, supervisors, who are at workplace and um, and uh, they will manage the process on behalf of the supervisor who is above. Exactly. And uh, here we again we should talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the supervision. What are your ideas? What is the disadvantage of having uh, the virtual supervision? Mm -hmm. Um, 
as you said, uh, they are the ones who uh, who uh, see the whole picture, but maybe mm -hmm. in in a virtual way they cannot uh, see exact the picture. Maybe uh, they can overlook something and not uh, exactly see the same uh, the thing, and mm -hmm. it can uh, lead to the problem in the future. Maybe. Yes, exactly. They may lose the, not intentionally, but they may lose some points and uh, this will uh, bring to additional hazards. We are talking about the safety at the workplace, but uh, at the same time, they, this may bring to the direct or, or indirect financial losses and etc. delays. Uh, this is about the reputation of the company, uh, of the project and etc. That's why exactly they may lose the focus they may lose some points and etc but what is the advantage of this again look this is not only about the supervisors but this is in overall more people you have at the site more interaction you have you, you have advantages and disadvantages of this if you have more inter more interaction you may have at the same time more focus but if you have uh, but at the same time you may have more interaction and you may have uh, the loss uh, of attention and distraction from the main process that's why more interaction you have at the workplace you have the black and white side of the process uh, that's why we may bring here also the point like uh, uh, you are saving the resource you are saving the time for uh, commuting to the workplace and etc uh, and this is type of the indirect financial uh, cost let me say but uh, at the same time you may uh, lose the attention of supervisor, you may uh, lose attention uh, and focus uh, on the safety topics and etc. So there are black and uh, uh, white side in every topic and here as well in supervision. So uh, maybe there, there may be also the problem like uh, you have only a few, as uh, Jala said, you have some subgroups inside uh, some uh, team and uh, each subgroup has its own uh, middle supervisor. Uh, this is your back-to-back -back, uh, and you are the main supervisor. Some of these back-to-backs may not understand clearly your message and this back-to-back -back will uh, communicate this in not appropriate way. But when you are at the workplace, you may ensure that people are understanding and you may prevent some um, uh, occurrences at the initial steps. When, for example, people did not understand you, and even after one hour, you can understand that he or she is doing in not proper way. So he is going in not uh, proper direction. You may redirect this person, but when you are uh, working remotely, you may overlook this and lose your focus. So, um, one second. Now, uh, when we have discussed the tools, I will uh, suggest you to discuss and uh, to just summarize the things we have discussed today. We will talk, uh, we have talked about the HC tools. I will go back again to the initial uh, slide when we uh, listed all the um, uh, HC tools. We talked about the communication, training, uh, supervision, audit and inspections, uh, and investigation. And we talked about the advantages and disadvantages. All this conversation was only about this uh, two uh, uh, points. Now I will ask you to share with me some ideas. You may, may write them on the slide or you may write them in the chat. Just uh, brainstorm for a few minutes, one, two minutes, and then write your final ideas about the advantages uh, for all HC tools. Just summarize and uh, find all advantages of virtual working, uh, of virtual HEC for the all HC tools, and the same do for disadvantages for the same tools. Just in a few words. I would ask uh, everyone to brainstorm, and maybe you, you may switch on your microphones and make a discussion right here, and then in, uh, in a group, uh, in teams, just write your ideas uh, here because uh, maybe uh, our ideas, I believe that our ideas will overlap and uh, just uh, not to copy the same ideas, we may discuss it here and write your idea. I'm switching off my microphone for one minute to stop talking and then I will wait for your ideas.
nobody wants to discuss, then uh, if you are ready, you may write your answers right there or in the chat. Mm -hmm. I fuck. Uh -huh. This one is new. Advantage. No commuting, more interaction, even with professionals who uh, to live overseas, disadvantage, no exact emotions, internet connection problems, uh, unattended losing attention. Okay, very well done. I will agree with you, Afak, with, with each of your points. Um, I would like to, uh, Leila Hanum, uh, I would like to add one more point. I think uh, one of the advantages is uh, less carbon footprint because we have no commuting. We, we are not doing commuting, so we have less carbon footprint in our lives. Very, very, very well done, uh, Rashad, because this topic is uh, actual not only in our country today, but it's uh, very actual in oil and gas industry for 2020 till 2025. Uh, because uh, we, uh, global, uh, this is just an information for you that global oil and gas companies, uh, especially Schlumberger and in other uh, global companies are uh, trying to decrease the level of footprint for this year 2020 uh, for five percent and uh, this was the um, uh, the idea uh, this idea came not in these conditions but uh, at the beginning of the year and I believe that we will even um, give the better result uh, even uh, rather than plant for this year so uh, i i mean that uh, your idea is very great and it's very actual of, especially for oil and gas industry yes thank you your uh, for your comment yeah now uh, more companies start to set their goals to lower carbon footprint uh, maybe till uh, 2050 or the 2030 exactly exactly this is a global uh, KPO for, uh, keep, I mean, objective for uh, most of the companies in oil and gas. Um, okay, thank you very much, Rashad. Uh, Jala, in virtual HEC, since people are not facing with real situation, they can be demotivated and less attentive to several points. So it can be less efficient for workers. From the other side, we can bring more people in contact and frequently in virtual HEC, uh, which is the positive side, I think. Okay, Jalia, I will agree with you as well. Uh, and here we have the advantage. Uh, can, uh, first, we have disadvantage about the demotivation, and then we have the, um, uh, the uh, positive part as we can gather more people together. Okay, I will agree with this as well. And also, I will say from my side that I will agree with Jala before I will read the opinion of Fidan. Uh, I will say about Jala's opinion uh, that, um, again, I, I agree with this, and this is not only inside one organization, this is about different communities which are merging and they are just communicating and interacting with, uh, interacting with each other. This is a very, uh, one of the best examples is uh, today's meeting and uh, your invitation to me uh, because this is type of interaction uh, which uh, usually maybe would not take the place. But today it is uh, very actual. Okay, thank you, Fidan. Advantage, uh, availability is access, low cost, great. Disadvantage, all procedure uh, depends on internet and its speed. The management over internet cannot be as effective as real situation. Yes, I will agree with you. This is exact the, the thing uh, I the the, the uh, thing yes I uh, try to uh, to deliver today yes because the efficiency is uh, really uh, on the low level let me say and because of the the only way to deliver is the internet if you have no internet connection you have no uh, connection with the people because you cannot phone uh, you cannot call by phone to uh, all uh, personal at work site. Uh, this is not real. Uh, uh, disadvantage. People got used to get information face-to-face. -face. Virtual EGC will be not as usual uh, understanding way. 
Yes, exactly. Because we have no emotions, we have no. Uh, there is a way in the trainings when the when I have passed the facilitator training, uh, people who teach me for, to facilitate the trainings, they usually say that uh, try to do uh, as minimum uh, uh, the conversation when you can confirm uh, the understanding of people because there are some uh, difficulties and there are some barriers when people cannot understand you. Try even if they are native speakers of the language you are talking on, you should answer, you should ensure that uh, people are understanding the things uh, you are talking about because you know, the speech may be complicated, your thoughts may be complicated, and etc. People may not be familiar with the workplace, with the th with the procedures we are talking about, and etc. Here, when we have the virtual uh, meetings and, and uh, trainings, etc., it is more difficult to understand uh, if employees are understanding you uh, in the way you are trying to explain. I do thank you very much. Elvin, maybe it is much more safe to have virtual one uh, than uh, the other one, because there is always risk of safety in all uh, meaning, like commuting or even some stuff in workplace. Elvin, I will agree with you, but uh, there is uh, something uh, something which I should mention here. So even if you are doing the things virtual, uh, you, you may uh, get something, but you are losing another things at the same time. So you may make, you may make all the things, all the operations virtual, and maybe you will um, uh, have the benefit from the safety point of view, but at the same time, you may have some delays in operation because you have some limited time and client would not understand you if you will uh, if you will delay with the project. And he will ask you to speed up the process and uh, bring more people to deliver the product uh, for, for, some, uh, for some set delay, sorry, deadline. In this case, what should you do? Your employees, you will, uh, you will ask more employees to come and work more. The, this is about the fatigue. This is about the hurry at the workplace, and etc. In this case, maybe you will have more hazards and risks at the end of the story, rather than if you will uh, just, um, just uh, do the work in a proper manner, uh, in a usual way when you had, for example, eight hour uh, workers, uh, for example, uh, 10 person per team. Uh, but I, uh, did you understand what I mean, Elvin and other colleagues or not? Did you get my point? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, because uh, when we are doing this shortcut, maybe uh, we will lose in some other parts. Yes, this is again about the white part and black part, white side and black side. Elvin, thank you very much again. Aigul, advantage, save of time and feel more comfortable, maybe. Uh, as well uh, as virtual HC is now uh, happening is best that we can join from uh, different Cities Evan. Uh, even, I'm um, sorry, sorry again. As well as virtual HEC is now happening, is best that we uh, join. Aigul, um, could you please uh, comment uh, the, second, uh, the, the, the second sentence, please? I did not get your point. As well as virtual HEC. Um, I mean, the condition is hard to come to Baku and meet with you. To meet with me? Or with... Uh, um. Nelakam, I think uh, what I do uh, mean, uh, we can join overseas to the meetings online. This is uh, about the overall meetings, Rashad, or? Yeah, I think, I think overall meetings. And learn about that. But now we can join and learn about that. Okay.
Okay, uh, from from my uh, if if I understand what uh, I mentioned, this is about uh, meet. Uh, this is about the uh, general communities. This is not only about the community inside your university or SPN, etc. This is about the interaction of different people from different communities. Uh, if I am not mistaken, and uh, yes, uh, if we this is one of advantages if we have this. Uh, meetings and trainings uh, more frequent and we if we have them online it is the better way from for people from different countries even to interact with each other because uh, there is uh, no yes you know yes you understand me yes thank you very much yes this is a better way to interact for people even from different countries yes this is a big advantage uh, and let's now go uh, to the next slide and see uh, what advantages and disadvantages I prepared uh, for this topic? And this is again, uh, this summarizes all the ideas you have just uh, shared with us. Uh, the advantages of virtual EGC is time saving. This is about commuting. This is about resource saving and money saving, even if this is indirect saving, but this is saving again. And uh, here I would uh, add the uh, I will, would add uh, here just Rashad's comment because it is correct. Okay. Um, yes, and uh, what about and uh, coming to the disadvantages, this is abstracted communication, abstracted uh, by uh, less emotions and less interaction uh, between people. Uh, this is abstracted supervision uh, because of the problems with the internet or uh, some loss of focus and etc. Uh, again, less interaction. Uh, this is not only about the communication, but this is on, on the, also about the uh, also about the. Uh, about the relations between the uh, people at the work site because uh, you may have a relation to your group mates but at the same time you have interaction with another uh, representatives of if you are talking about your workplace or your university and my workplace we are interacting on the daily basis with different people so we lost this interaction as well we are losing our focus because maybe uh, even if we're at home we are more comfortable and we may take for example coffee and etc uh, or, uh, at any time we would like but we are losing our focus because we cannot be uh, focused at the same uh, shape as we are focused at the workplace uh, because we know that we are at the work uh, from uh, for example, nine to six, and we should only work during this time. But when we are at home, we may lose the focus and uh, we may uh, just uh, just uh, lose the time for another things which are not related to our job and etc. Uh, then uh, high probability of uh, service delays. This is the thing I have commented to the comment uh, from Elvin. Uh, this is, uh, there is a probability to delay the service, to delay the product, which is affecting to our reputation and to our relations uh, with customer, etc. Uh, look, for example, when I am talking about the customer, this is not um, uh, this is not only about the uh, huge companies, global companies like Schlumberger, NBP, and Sokar, etc. This is about an overall service delay. For example, today I am the, you are the customer and I am the service provider. I am providing you the training. If I have, for example, if I am not focused on the things, if I am not focused on the job and etc., on the this is type of the job for me today. So if I am not focused on this, I may uh, this may bring to the service delay and I may delay with your training, with your meeting and etc. Uh, tomorrow you may present some presentation and I will just uh, admit to listen to your presentation and in this case you will be the uh, customer, uh, I, I will be the customer and you will be the service provider. 
again, if you are not focused on the uh, on your work, uh, if you have some distractions, then you will have a service delay and um, some maybe problems with the customer. And uh, uh, the last one uh, is the indirect time and money loss. Here again, we are talking about if we are delaying the service, we are uh, just uh, losing the time, we are losing the money, and etc. Uh, so th this may also bring to some indirect uh, losses uh, in our work. So we, we may bring here uh, more uh, advantages and disadvantages, but these are the uh, most uh, most uh, um, the, the, these are the most uh, let me say um, uh, important or uh, most affecting the business uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I will advise you uh, to uh, to. I'm sorry. Uh, you, I will advise you to take a look for all these points, to add your addings if you have so, uh, by clicking here, uh, and uh, add, add just uh, your points if you have so. Okay. And uh, now it is your turn ask me questions. You may switch off your microphones uh, or switch on your microphones or you may write the, uh, in, the, in the chat your questions and uh, I'm more than welcome to answer questions. Nela Hanım. Bene. Yes. Uh, you told us that uh, about international audit. So mm -hmm. I have a question that uh, who do that audit for companies? So Fidan, thank you very much for your questions. Uh, it's a very related and interesting question, uh, really. So uh, for example, we have a bunch of uh, different companies which are providers of the fire insurance for the companies and we are uh, we are just announcing as a global company, we are announcing the tender and looking for the companies who may provide uh, this service for us. Then we are, uh, after tender is completed, we are uh, just uh, comparing the companies which have um, submitted the documents, let me say, or uh, just submitted the request to insure our company, and then we uh, choose them. There is uh, there is lots of companies which are providing this service. I'm not sure uh, uh, what is the name, exact name of the company, but if I'm not uh, mistaking, uh, it was something like like FMC or like uh, something like that. Uh, uh, fire. I, I'm not sure about the name of the exact name of the company, but this is international company which ensures the Schlumberger around the world uh, for uh, fire safety. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fidan. But if we will develop this service in, in the country, then we will ensure uh, the company uh, because it will be cheaper and uh, it is more uh, comfortable to work inside because you may organize again uh, with the company uh, which is abroad you, you, you may have no chance to go abroad to uh, conduct the meetings uh, to, um, to 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 conduct the uh, service quality meetings and etc but uh, when the company is uh, inside your country it is more easier and uh, it's not challenging to provide any type or just to ask them to come and to fix some problem at your site and etc but uh, when you are uh, in different countries it's uh, really challenging uh, to have the service on a proper level Yes. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, we have in the chat. Yes. 
Um, one second. I agree. We may also add health problems as a disadvantage of virtual HEC because we are exposed to much radiation. Yes, yes, I will agree with you. I agree. Very nice point. Yes, it is also one of the problems. I will uh, to have. Oh, okay. Um, okay, Stefan, uh, what is the possibility of conducting effective hazard hunts with virtual HEC? Stefan, uh, uh, I will, uh, I will um, suggest to ask these questions, uh, this question, this question uh, to the people uh, who are participating in this meeting today. Uh, dear team, what do you think? What is the possibilities of conducting effective hazard hunt with virtual HEC. What is your ideas about this? Uh, I think that it won't be any effective because we don't see it in real and we can't check our equipment uh, which are working in the uh, work, uh, which are working in the site. That's why uh, I can say that it will be effective. Okay, thank you very much. Other ideas? Other ideas? Uh, in my opinion, if there are some camera control and uh, someone is just uh, watching them always, it could be be effective for hazard hunting. So they can be any, they can see uh, anything happen uh, at uh, in initial point. So it would be easier uh, to protect the. Um, Okay, so you think if, if you don't, that uh, this will be efficient if we are going with uh, camera and uh, checking the workplaces, uh, even this is better than nothing, yes? Yeah, yeah, I mean, in this way. If we have this uh, a camera control mm -hmm. always, uh, yes. 24 hours, it would be easier uh, to check uh, the safety. Okay. I will agree with you, Fidan, and add from my side. Stefan, thank you very much for your question. And uh, my answer is that um, the virtual HEC hazard hunt may be effective only in the way if the supervisor knows its, his workplace very well. So if supervisor is familiar with the workplace and uh, knows the weak points of the site, then he may, for example, uh, at our work site in Schlanderge, we are conducting the virtual hazard hunts twice per week with top management. So top management of each product line, of each segment, let me say, you know about the product lines we have. This is about well, well services, DNM, BDT, and etc. completions and other product lines. So uh, uh, line manager of each product line is joining this uh, call, and then we are going uh, through the base and work, uh, through the work site and uh, just uh, switching the camera on. The management who knows his workplace very well, he asks us to go to the to a specific point to check the specific things uh, from safety point of view and we are checking. Even if this manager wouldn't like to show um, uh, uh, the, the, let me say, the weak points of his work site, uh, we as HEC functions should and we know the weak points and we are showing this point uh, uh, to the man delivering the, uh, de delivering the issues until the... If you remember, we said about the virtual inspections in, in the last... Point was the uh, lead specialist or some middle supervisor and say on this uh, middle supervisor or the lead uh, specialist at the work site. Otherwise, it, this will not be effective because every employee would like to just uh, to, 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 to skip the problem and not to show it to the management because uh, nobody wants the problems uh, at, the at the workplace. But the 
The problem is that we are talking about the safety culture when the people will understand that our manager usually say that when the people will understand that uh, safety is for them, then the, we wouldn't need the HEC function at the workplace. So then we will lose our workplace, our job. Uh, that's why so people need to understand that uh, the supervision, the meetings, the hazard hunts, and etc., they should be more effective as they can do them. This, this. and uh, that's why uh, people should be interested in uh, conducting this uh, hazard hunts effectively. Otherwise, uh, the, another day they will face with these problems by themselves and uh, will uh, will have to uh, solve them by them themselves. That's why each side should be interested in effective uh, virtual uh, hazard hunt. Uh, did I uh, answer your question, Stefan? Um. Yes, you did. Thank you. Uh, from Ferit, Ferit, uh, or with computer software, maybe we can check what we can check. What is the beginning of the conversation? Ferit, may I ask you one more time to uh, to uh, to complete your? Uh, sentence because i lost your point you just or with computer software maybe we can check um i think uh farid <coughs> here points at um hazard hunt uh, checking uh, equipment hazard inside. Hunt. Oh, okay. yeah. hazard hunt. Okay. Uh -huh. hazard hunt with computer software. Yes, I meant we could hazard hunt with computer. We conduct hazard hunt with computer software. Yes, we do this uh, with computer software. Like, uh, I mean, um, we are just uh, we are just joining the meeting. Uh, switching on the cameras and then we are discussing the workplace hazards we have. So hazard hunt means that uh, usually people are gathering at the work workshop, for example, top managers of different work sites, they are gathering in the middle of workshop, for example, uh, at, uh, at, at some agreed uh, uh, hours, and then they are going uh, uh, through the different workshops, uh, and doesn't matter if this workshop belongs in work site belongs to them or not, they are going through these workshops and looking for any hazards uh, which, are, uh, which are existing in the workplace. Now, when we are limited and restricted from the workplaces, we have supervisors and middle supervisors at work place which uh, are doing this function for us they are just showing the camera we are knowing the workplace uh, our workplaces and the hazards and the weak points of the uh, workshops and we are asking to go in exactly to that point and uh, it is believe me it is very difficult for for the first times uh, it is easier to prepare to such a hazard hunts and uh, people are trying to show us only the things which are clear, which are okay, uh, and which are compliant. But uh, the next times, uh, if uh, we are asking, if we are looking for systematic, uh, uh, systematic mistakes, then we will find out that, okay, uh, this works uh, not in a proper way. Uh, that's why they may be efficient if the supervisor knows his or she's works workplace. Thank you, you made it clear. Thank you, Ferit. I may ask one more question? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, which documents are used in our country in order to conduct safety regulations? I mean, uh, in America, there is only uh, one act, OSHA, which is uh, applied to all companies that's locating in America. 
uh, for safety measures or safety assessment. And do we have such a document in Azerbaijan that applies? Jale, really, it is a very good suggestion for our authorities to have uh, some uh, document which will be applied to all workplaces. But unfortunately, we haven't got such a unique document. We have uh, different ministries which are responsible for different parts uh, of, uh, let me say, operation. And uh, they are operating by... Some uh, regulations, uh, regulations, as I have said already, are not applicable for today's condition even. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, unfortunately, no. Uh, there are different uh, uh, legislation and, uh, which are uh, applied to the companies uh, like Schlumberger and other companies. But nothing... Uh, so each company has its own documentation? No, I mean no. I mean that uh, our legal authorities have the, for example, uh, electrical safety uh, legislation, uh, legislation related, let me say, to the electrical safety. And this electrical safety legislation is uh, articles, let me say, are applied to different companies. Uh, and to, uh, there is, uh, let me say, uh, ministry which is responsible for compliance of this legislation. But there is nothing like in the US uh, which is uh, unique uh, for the whole country. One document, let me say, which may be applied to different parts and different um, uh, types of operations inside one country. So we have, for different topics, we have different uh, organizations and different uh, uh, legislation uh, which is applied. Okay, thank you. Is it clear, Jala, or not? Uh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think uh, we don't have additional questions, yeah? Yeah, dear friends. Do you have any additional questions? One more question? Two questions? Ah. Yeah, I think there is no more. Uh, thank you, Leila Hanum, for joining us today. The presentation was absolutely uh, insightful. Uh, lots of information uh, we have got today. Thank you uh, for this. And uh, if you would like, we can uh, start our video and take a photo that you mentioned. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you, teacher, for the presentation. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Leila Hanum. Thank you, Thank you very for much. your time. Thank you very much, Fidan. Ah, great. Mm. One minute, please. I will. <laughs> Thank you. Very Thank you too. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank really you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Leila Hanum. See you again. See, See you, you, dear participants, next event.